Guys, this week I was able to work in the 911 system and the interfacility system, and in this video I'm going to show you the equipment that's inside of each system, the similarities and differences. And also, I'm going to share with you my step-by-step -step process on how I could check my ambulance every single time and make sure I have all the equipment I need. Alright, check it out. Guys, before I check the ambulance and show you what's inside of it, I just want to let you know, I check the, I check the ambulance the same way I do my patient care, which is BLS before ALS. All right, because you don't want to show up to a scene and you're missing your C collar, but you have all your electrodes. You know what I mean? It's just you got to stick to the fundamentals first. And then after you cover the fundamentals, then you move on to the advanced stuff. Word to medic students, EMT students, and just people that are at the beginning of their career in EMS and healthcare. I would say if you build a systematic approach for everything you pursue, it makes things very easy. So this is my systematic approach. Do BLS before ALS. In the 800 and then I wipe everything down and then I strap everything in that's what I those are the three things I do when I start an IV I also have a systematic approach and that's what helps me start an IV with a lot of ease so just do a systematic approach every single time like I said you don't have to do it the same way I the way same way I do it but as long as all the bases are covered you should be fine there's a checklist that we utilize at the beginning of every single tour that helps us remember things and also it's part of our checkoff list. Notice here, we have different categories. And a vehicle to be in service and to say that it's 800, it has to have all of these, or mostly all of it, with some minor exceptions start the shift it's always good to check the lights make sure the tires have enough air make sure the oil on the vehicle is checked make sure the fluids are good and make sure the lights and the sirens also work the outside of the bus you make sure your main tank has oxygen you have a fire extinguisher also these wipes are gonna, I'm gonna be using shortly to wipe everything down after checking the vehicle over here we have another transport equipment along with flares, a jack, and this is basically our stair chair. And over here we have more trauma and mobilization equipment. Here we have splints, a short board, a traction splint for an adult and pediatric. We have a scoop stretcher and a long backboard for mobilization purposes and for ease of extrication. Cabinets of an ambulance, you see that everything's nice and organized and segregated based on its purpose. So here you have the ALS stuff. Here you have the BLS, basic life support stuff, or equipment, better said. Up here you have the airway equipment. We have small, medium, and large gloves. And what we have is the other pair of gloves, which is the extra large. We have a pediatric tethoscope. We have different size blood pressure cuffs. We have C collars and a headbed, along with start start triage tags. We also have a lantern, and we also have nine foot straps in that blue container there. Over here, what we have is trauma dressing, the OB kit, and etc. Some other equipment: we have helmets for when we respond to a fire or a mass casualty incident, along with the fire department and the firefighters and here we have a portable suction device and that's our bunker gear that's the clothes that we wear along with the helmets to participate in the mass casualty incidents left we have our sharps container our waste basket we have a urinal and slash bed pan for people to either vomit or urinate or end etc we have pillows we have m95 respirator mask for once again mass casualty incidents some ambulances also have antidotes for nerve agent attacks under that the green device is a KED used for mobilization and extrication of trauma patients and here we have more respirator mask and notice that they're sealed so they're only supposed to be unsealed in emergencies that require them notice here we have uh, spare oxygen and spare regulator with another full oxygen tank. Here's my vest. I don't wear it to every single call, but I do carry it on the ambulance on every single shift, depending on the uh, potential level of danger. 
will depend on whether or not I'm wearing it on a specific assignment. All right, so these are the bags that we are supposed to carry on every single assignment in the 91 system and in the interfacility transport system. We're supposed to carry three bags of equipment as ALS providers. We have the ALS response bag, we have an oxygen bag, and we have our cardiac monitor along with some sort of transport equipment. In this case, if we were going on the job on the street and the patient it doesn't need to be immobilized, we could use the stretcher like we have here. If we go up to an apartment on the fifth floor, for example, then we'll use a stair chair. And these are the pieces of equipment that we have. Tour about what we take on every single job. Basically on our ALS bag, we, everybody has a different placement for everything I'm about to show you, but more or less everything will be in the same order, just in a different pocket, let's say for example. Like in this pocket, we have a sharp container, we have our glucometer, and we have some IO drills interosseous drills here we have our trauma dressing four by fours cravats and etc in this pocket we have our things to start ivs iv starter kits glucometers everything that has to do with intravenous access uh and etc like administration fluid and we here here we have uh glucose via oral route here we have more shoot more uh needles we have some uh, we have a liter bag here along with a drip set more needles we have some flushes we have an IO drill and the, I, and the CPAP mask and here we have our medications I'm not gonna go through the entire medications but and on the later video I will here's our intubation kit and here oh man I made a mess I'll clean this up in our oxygen bag, what we carry basically is an oxygen tank, non rebreathers, portable uh, BP cuff, nebulizer, BVMs for adult and kids, and OPAs, and a C collar, because you never know. Right? And in the monitor, this is the, this will be considered the uh, diagnostic side. We have our things for the 3 and 12 leads. We have the BP cuff, we have a large BP cuff, a pulse ox. And this is the therapeutic side. The therapeutic side will be the one that's utilized to either cardiovert, pace, or defibrillate somebody. And that's this side. The only thing that's diagnostic here is the end tidal CO2 tubing. And usually the electrodes go back here. And here they are, electrodes. And more electrodes. That's pretty much the setup with our monitor. And those are our bags on every single equipment. We take the response bag. We take the O2, we take the cardiac monitor, and we take the transport equipment. When it's BLS, if you're working basic life support, you bring a O2, a response bag, an AED, and a transport equipment. Since the ALS is pretty much the same thing, but instead of an AED, we bring, bring up the cardiac monitor. So the way this bus is set up is very different from the from the other one. As you can tell, it's much more narrow, but we have the same equipment or almost the same equipment inside of it. Here you have your main O2 tank. Make sure to check that at the beginning of the tour. That one's good. We have a immobilization equipment. Down here we have our splints and etc. We have our stair chair here, the equipment, and what's inside the equipment is pretty much the same as a 911 system. This company stocks it the same exact way. So we already went through that. You already saw that part. So this is what that's what's inside here. And the cabinets, same thing. All right. This one is not as organized as the other ambulance, but we're familiar with it and we know where everything is. And it's also labeled. Check that out. Check that out. All right. And everything's segregated the same way. So up here you have your BLS stuff, and down here you can find some ALS stuff. So same same common theme throughout. All right, here's some controllers. And then here's the stuff that is exclusive for uh, interfacility transport ambulance, where up here we have our vent tubing. Take this off. Here we have our IV pump. And we also have a ventilator. Down here, we have our suction canister, portable suction. We have some gloves. We have a portable child seat and in here we have our trauma bag 
so the difference between this ambulance and the 91 ambulance as you can see we don't have any bunker gear we still have the spare o2 tanks up and down and we don't have any bunker gear any helmets any stuff that's dealt with emergencies we're mostly dealt with transporting critically ill patients from one hospital or one facility to the next but it's pretty much the same setup so after checking the bags and making sure everything's strapped in as you can see here what I do is I wipe everything down I wipe the bench down I wipe the captain's chair down and I wipe the inside of the ambulance down on the driver's cockpit both my side and my partner's side depending on whether or not I'm driving that night either way I wipe the entire front up why because this is and other healthcare facilities are germ factories you know un unintentionally but there's always a lot of germs so whatever we could do on our part to do preventative medicine then we definitely should and what i use is either bleach wipes or alcohol wipes and while i wipe everything down because let's so basically we should do our part to execute preventative medicine because let's say you have a burn victim you're not going to have time to like organize everything and you're most likely going to be throwing one patient here if there's a bunch of burn victims and one patient on the stretcher and if you didn't take the time to wipe this down at the beginning of the sheet then you're going to I mean at the beginning of the shift you're basically or we're going to be basically adding to the stress that they have within their body and the lack of homeostasis and remember a lot of these patients they either die from hypovolemia and sepsis so you know it's not aseptic by using alcohol or Clorox wipes, but it's always good to keep it as clean as possible. You know, if you can mop the floor, it's not something that happens every single time, especially if you're hungry and you need parking, but at least always look look, look for ways to start your shift off on the right foot, strap everything in, check your bags, and this basically to me feels euphoric. You know what I mean? Like, I checked, the, I checked all the bags, I made sure I had all the equipment I need, and we're fully stocked, we're, we have our immobilization equipment, I wipe the front up, and I wipe the back up. We're good to go, you know what I mean? Like if the state inspector pulls us over, I have everything I need on me, and everything we need inside of the ambulance, and that's the feeling you wanna go for, if not on all, or if not the majority of the tours you, you're on. If you do that, then you're good. You know what I mean? But if you start cutting corners, then eventually that's going to be highlighted either during your patient care or during a state inspection. All right, guys. So this is what I do to check an ambulance every single time. I hope it helps. Please share this with somebody you think could benefit from it. All right. Peace.